This is Christopher Moldong of Chris's Storytelling Corner. Today I'm going to do a movie review for The Spy Gone North. Next time I'll have a manga review for Skip Beat Volumes 27 and 28, an anime review for Shimonetta, and a movie review for Crazy Rich Asians. Check out my Twitter page and author's Facebook page. Links to all these will be provided on the description. I'd really like to hear from you guys as well, so leave any comments, and make sure to subscribe and share this channel as well. So, the way that this is going to work is that I am going to give a recap of the movie, The Spy Gone North, and then give my thoughts on the movie. Uh, there will have spoilers. So, as far as an initial grade goes, I'll give the grade a B, and I'll give my uh, reasons why and, my, and the thoughts. So, let's recap The Spy Gone North. In 1993, reports emerged that North Korea is developing nuclear weapons. Former South Korean military officer Park Suk Young. Uh, if I get the names wrong, I'm really bad at pronouncing names, uh, so just bear with me there. I'll refer to him just as Park. Um, Park is recruited by the National Intelligence Service, NIS, to infiltrate the highest ranks in North Korea and learn about the program. Uh, their nuclear program. He is given the code name Black Venus. Uh, besides Park, only the South Korean president and NIS foreign affairs director Choi Hak Sung, we'll just call him Choi, are aware of Black Venus's existence. Park then travels to Beijing, China, under the guise of a businessman in an attempt to interest high-ranking North Korean official Ri Myung Un, we'll come Ri, in a business deal. He comes up with a proposal to create and place ads in North Korea. As time passes, he gains the trust of Ri, and he is even given a chance to meet the North Korean uh, leader Kim Jong-il with the idea of placing ads throughout North Korea, uh, uh, shooting and placing ads. But first, he must pass through Section Chief uh, Jung Mo Taik, uh, Taik uh, what's called Jung, of the North Korea State Security Department. Uh, during the run-up to the 1998 South Korean presidential election, Park uh, discovers secret deals between high-ranking South Korean and North Korean individuals and becomes conflicted. He returns to Beijing and wiretaps a meeting between North and South Korean officials, and they don't want a certain candidate to win the presidency. It turns out that they've been kind of sabotaging this person's presidency. Park confronts Choi, who gets angry with him and just kind of tells him to do what he's told because if this new candidate is elected, their agency might go away. Ri and Park, though, convince Kim Jong il to kind of intervene on this, like, on this pretty much sabotage of this candidate and, and are successful. Park goes back home and Ri is actually taken away. Park and Ri, though, were, were later shown that Park and Ri get united when two an actress from North Korea, North Korea and South Korea meet face to face. Uh, we then find out that Park was uh, accused of multiple charges, goes to prison, but gets out in 2016. So before we get into my thoughts on the movie, I'd like to plug my author's website at www.chrismaldon.com and you can read a new blog post on there every week. Also, do you like action, adventure, fantasy? Then buy my book, The Mustard Prince in the Condiment Kingdom, for just $4.99 via ebook on Amazon.com or on my author's website. Links to buy it will be provided on the page description. Also, uh, please subscribe to this channel as that would really help me out. So, uh, some thoughts. Um, the thing that really helps the movie. And it gets it real good. I gave it a B. One thing you have to understand. It's a really long movie. And, and I'll say this. The first two acts of the movie. Um, I feel are the strongest parts. And the third act gets really political. And away from the original goal. Which was to find out information. About, um, about North Korean. Um nuclear sites and, and the information and what's kind of cool is that you see Park uh, Suk Young who's the Black Venus pretending to be a businessman and he has to live 
and act like one. And, and he does a really good job at being a businessman throughout the whole movie. Like, he, he's just a totally different guy. Um, he kind of went through steps. He, he actually became, out after the military, he became an alcoholic. But it was just all part of a plan um, for him to be a spy. And then he becomes a businessman. All part of a plan. He's really a spy. Um, he, this was acted really well. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I, uh, I thought the the main character just did the part really well. Very believable. Um, very believable as a businessman. With this humanity, you know. There's a real humanity to a lot of these characters. When he goes to the north, he kind of just sees something totally different. And it, it really plays on the title of the movie. Um, Ri Myung Woon. He's a North Korean official. This guy loves North Korea. I mean, he wants the best for North Korea and, and tells uh, Park as much, you know. Um, it, it's, you know, he's there throughout the movie. I think he, he had uh, finance. If I'm not mistaken, I'm remembering the top of my head. So he's really important to North Korea. And by the end of the movie, you don't actually know if he lives or dies. Turns out that he lives, which is really good. Um, you know, it's kind of funny on a side note. It's funny that he's one of the high-ranking officials. And he has a wife and kid. And you see his place. It's a box. You know, I mean, it really is like the smallest condo or apartment you can find is what he gets, you know, um, and it really goes to show the conditions of North Korea. Uh, we also saw NIS Foreign Affairs Director Choi Hak Sung. This guy, you know, he, he's about following orders, but, you know, by the end of it, it you, you kind of see his true colors. It's like, okay, well, if we pick this candidate, the organization goes, don't interfere, park, you know, get with the program and whatnot, you know, he, he was always kind of butting heads with park and, and whatnot, um, working, he worked with him quite well, but, um, you know, by the end of it, it you know, they, they were not on the same page, we saw Jung Mu, Mu Ta, Taik, uh, Taik, who's the section chief of the North Korea state security department this guy is pretty conniving you know he actually had his own plans going on with like you know e even just saying that they have nuclear weapons was kind of a plan in itself um you know he, he was not immune to bribes though and his loyalty kind of lied more with himself and his own interests than anyone else's. We also saw other characters. I, I didn't mention this in the recap. But there's like uh, a professor, Kim jang Hyuk, who, who used to actually work in the North Korean facility. Um, they actually <laughs> they actually created this. Um, it's not a retreat, but this like. It's kind of like this talk slash convention to just draw this professor out and get information from him. There was also another department head, department head Kim Eun Su, who um, he was a spy. I, I believe he was a spy also, and I believe he gets killed as well. The person who played Kim Jong Il did a really good job too. I mean, he was. He really was, like, he just had these mannerisms that I, I can just imagine um, the North Korean leader to have, you know. That, like, there's certain ways that Ri tells Park to act around him. Don't interrupt him. Don't look him in the eye. Don't do this. Don't contradict him. And, and just his mannerisms, it, it, he, he was kind of... He kind of had something of an emperor with no clothes type of deal thing going on, Kim Jong Il. Uh, so I, I thought that was just, he's just really well played. Um, 
the spy gun north you know um I think Park's loyalty to South Korea has always been there, but I think he really got to see... Uh, he kind of went north in the sense that, like, he had to kind of betray his, his his command, like, his bosses, and kind of go north. He was more helping Re by the end of the movie. And, and in that sense, the spy did go north in that sense I like the spy stuff you know um, it's all there pretending to be a businessman was really cool um, all that stuff to just infiltrate North Korea and whatnot the stuff they had to go through you know he got he got inject Park got injected with like truth serum and managed to get out of it you know I, I, I was pretty amazed got his audience with Kim Jong-il and wiretapping and whatnot. You get to see all the cool spy stuff, tense moments and whatnot. Um, and, and Park actually managed to get out of it. It was really interesting, though. By the third half, or the third last third of the movie, it got really political, you know, in the sense that, like, it, it had to do with the election. And th then the story went from, like, oh, okay, I had to infiltrate North Korea to... Um, uh, to inf infiltrate North Korea to uh, now there's this whole political thing going on and um, it I, I understood it because they kind of hinted at it throughout the whole movie um, but like um, it, it just kind of changed you know, it, it was, I wouldn't say a sudden change, but it was a change in the movie that really strayed from where it's supposed to go. Like I said, he's supposed to infiltrate North Korea nuclear facilities, and all of a sudden it became a more of a political thing where, like, you know, people from South Korea were apparently shooting mortar into, like, I think they're South Korean. I might have to watch the movie again into the hills to make it seem like there's an attack, you know, and, and whatnot. Um, so there's a lot of political sabotage and whatnot going on as well. I like the end where Lee Hiori played herself. I forgot if she's a North or South Korean. The, the two actresses, for the first time, North and South Koreans meet, you, you know, right here. But that's not true. They showed in the background, Rhi in the, is in the background along with Park, seeing the two actresses meet, like, for the first time. North and South coming together for the first time. No, in the background, it already happened. I thought that was a really cool happening, that uh, thing that happened in the movie, you know? Um, and further goes to the idea that the spy is going North, you know, he is becoming more ingratiated into like North Korea and what they're going through. And speaking of North Korea, um, man, I mean, that gosh, I mean, there's a scene where he's in a um, there's a couple scenes that were quite telling, you know, it's like he's in an apartment, and I believe it was Jung who told him, Hey. Just to tell you, sudden blackouts will happen. <laughs> just to tell you, you know, it, it just it's like a a common thing. Um, he goes into this town and it's so poor. You see body like dead bodies being piled on top of each other, and it's just like it's pretty pretty crazy. They see Kim Jong Il, and there's like this like mural of him looking like. Looking like the Messiah, pretty much, in the background, you know. Um, when Kim Jong-il gets all the nice stuff, but the people do not get the nice stuff. You know, and that was really illustrated here. Um, so, yeah, overall, like I said, good movie overall. I thought it was solid. It's just a little long. Uh, like I said, the first two acts were, were better than the last act, in my opinion. It went from, like, infiltrating North Korea to, like, this, like, political story with the, um, with the election in, 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 like, what, 98 or something like that. 
um, and, and that change kind of it, it doesn't bring resolution as to the original mission but it also just brought something of a, a kind of a sudden change in the story which is why I give it a B but overall good movie uh, very interesting like I said a bit long but uh, well worth watching so that's all for today. If you like this, don't forget to subscribe, share, and comment to this channel. Thank you for listening to this movie review. Next time, I will have a manga review for Skip Beat Volumes 27 and 28, an anime review for Shimaneta, and a movie review for, the, for uh, Crazy Rich Asians. Uh, thank you, and until next time.